but here's a serial trusted advisor. Let's have a short introduction into Microsoft OneLeg. OneLeg is a storage foundation for Microsoft Fabric. You will have only one OneLeg in your tenant and it's a SaaS offering and it's based on principle of a data lake. So all your data fl will flow into one leg and one leg will serve all your data, all your analytics data um, for things like, for example, Power BI or Notebook or Spark Notebooks and so on. Um, let's have a look. So one leg is sitting basically in the middle or as a foundation as you like and will hold all your data. So we can draw a big ton around that, all your data from two sides. One side is data in. So data will go into one leg from one side, from the left, and data will go out of one leg to the right. You have a variety of uh, sources for data in. Um, the data in could be, uh, for example, existing SQL databases, uh, either in Azure or on-premises. Uh, data in could be also files from any source uh, or data in could be uh, data from, from other cloud providers like Amazon S3 buckets. You can write that here because it's file-based. Um, and you can have um, other ways to copy data in, um, for example, unstructured data, which is a little bit like a special case. Everything of that will go into one lake in a structure. So how is um, one leg structured? There's a very basic structure. As I said, you have one one leg per tenant. So the tenant from a logical point of view is above one leg. Um, in your tenant, there is one one leg and the one one leg serves all your fabric capacities that you have. You might have one, you might have zero, you might have 10 or 15 or whatever fabric capacities all these capacities are served by one one leg. So regardless where your data is going, all the capacities are in a logical layer served capacities by default. There we go. See? One capacity, two or three or four, as you name it, are served by one one leg. The one leg itself then is organized in workspaces workspace. You can take the workspace as the main principle for one leg because all security, um, a lot of settings um, and all items are aligned always to one workspace. So it's a little bit like, I don't know, drive in Windows or a side in SharePoint, a site collection, or maybe an organizational unit in Active Directory or whatever you're referring to. Uh, inside of a workspace, um, you have all your fabric artifacts like lake houses or warehouses and so on, but you can also have folders, folders, subfolders in a workspace, or you can have items, items like lake house, warehouse, and everything else um, around these 50 items that you can see beautifully, by the way, in this fabric periodic table. These are all items that you can have in a workspace or in a workspace folder. So this is the logical structure. Um, so all items that we would uh, draw on the right side to consume data from one leg, like most prominent Power BI reports, reports, and right? um, logically sit in this workspace, right? So we can draw a dotted line, for example, from here over to that workspace um, because it's logically sitting in that workspace or in a subfolder of that workspace. Um, so who can consume data from one leg? Um, Power BI reports, notebooks are very famous. Notebooks. Um, but basically everything else, even if you have something like GraphQL as an API, GraphQL, uh, it also consumes um, the data out of your one leg. Um, so as you can see, there are different interfaces. 
not all tools use the same interface to one leg. One leg source the data, um, but you have different engines that provide this data to different consumers. So the engines are in between here, like that. There we go. Um, these are the engines. There we go. These are the engines. Uh, so you have a variety of engines like SQL engine, SQL, SQL endpoints. Uh, but you have also files. And the files in one leg are in a special format uh, called delta format. Delta. Delta packet format. It's an open format. It's very well known. Microsoft uses the standard implementation so you can access it with every uh, endpoint API like Python and so on. Uh, and it's highly efficient. Um, so every data that comes into one leg is stored as delta in one leg. One delta is a native format in one leg. You cannot always access the raw delta file. That depends a little bit in a lake house. You can, in a warehouse, it's hidden from you, but still it's stored in data. Um, so how are the ways where you can get data in? Uh, just to mention it briefly, because we will have dedicated um, videos for, for each topic. Uh, you can import the data manually, of course. Um, but uh, when you have a structured data like a SQL Server, there are easier ways. And the easiest way to get data in is mirroring, mirror. Mirror is like a predefined ETL flow uh, where you can adopt a lot of um, common sources and just copy them over to one leg in the Delta format. For files, for not st uh, structured data, you can use shortcuts. Shortcuts means that the data stores in the, lo in the, in the location like S3 uh, in the source um, and it's shortcutted into one leg. Of course, there's a caching involved, which makes sense. Um, but beside of that, the data is in S3 format, right? And of course, you can upload the, da the data to one leg. There's a very handy tool called One Leg File Explorer that looks a little bit like OneDrive. It's just seeing in your Windows File Explorer, and you can drag and drop data directly into workspaces. It's very handy when you need to copy the Excel spreadsheet on a regular basis or something like that. Um, so you can have different sources. You can have different ways how the data comes into your one leg. But regardless of the way, the consumer side is still the same. So everything like, um, like uh, the um, let's switch to red, like the SQL endpoint um, or notebooks where you consume data or Power BI reports will access the data regardless how it is stored in one leg, um, for example, via shortcut or mirroring or something else. So this is like transparent to you. Um, the security is enforced directly on one leg. That's also a separate topic in the end, but there's a thing called one leg security that makes everything secure. Let's draw a lock here. Let's see that. Um, you can define security directly on one leg and it's propagated throughout every consumer and every endpoint. So when you give read permissions or uh, you don't give any permissions to a data for a person, uh, regardless whether they consume it through a notebook or Power BI report, they will not see the data. They are not allowed to. Um, internally, one leg is based on uh, Azure Data Lake ADLS v2. Uh, that's a storage engine inside of Azure. And you can also shortcut ADLS v2 data directly in one leg if you want. But this is hidden from you, so you don't see any details of ADS LS B2. Um, you have time travel built in, so you can go back in time um, if you if you need to, or if you have to. Um, and you have very fast performance in one leg, so it will serve all your data needs. Um, there, I, I promise that there is more one in one leg than the, the name. And one principle is that you have one copy. Yeah? one copy because you can shortcut data inside of one leg. So if you have multiple workspaces and one workspace holds data that you need in a separate 
in a different workspace, then you can do that with a shortcut. That's also a different topic. We will give, dive, dive a little bit into there in a different video, but still uh, that you have an idea. The, I, the, the principle is that you have only one copy of your data in, in one leg, right? It's a single copy, um, regardless how you access your data via SQL endpoint, uh, via Spark, um, Spark, and everything is stored in data format. So it's your central data layer. Let's go a little bit uh, deeper, right? Um, so you have um, Let's go a little bit more into into the structure of one leg. So when we put the tenant on top, tenant, then you have one one leg, one one leg, and um, then you have the capacities, capacity, capacity one, capacity two. And under this capacities, you have workspaces, sales or like finance. Uh, and here you have also, let's say, I don't know, marketing uh, and uh, some, I don't know, uh, management. So this is the workspaces, like that, workspace, and there are assigned to a capacity. You can reassign a workspace to a different capacity uh, without any problems. It's a matter of seconds. And beyond that, we have the fabric resources like lake houses, warehouses, and you can have your files like CSV import files and so on. Um, you have different engines sitting on one leg. Um, so one leg engines have your one leg right and for the end regarding the engines you have spark spark is an in-memory high processing high throughput um, compute cluster you have t-sql and um, you have power bi why is power bi special because with power bi you can access one leg directly uh, so spark is for the data engineer uh, SQL uh, is for the SQL developer, SQL dev, and Power BI is for the business analyst. Right? So different roads, different engines, everything attached to one, one leg. So this is basically a short introduction into one leg. You see it's really one in a generic way because you have only one sitting at the center of everything. What are typically questions or uh, things that come from the community regarding one leg? It's such a short look. So um, we have one prime way to access data in one leg, which is a lake house. Lake house is a lightweight layer on top of one leg data to, to, to build tables out of data and access it via, for example, T-SQL. Um, so when to use a lake house and when to use a warehouse. Um, for um, high performance needs, warehouse is a choice to go because a warehouse has better performance, is optimized for large data sets and so on. For lightweight access, lake house is the best way to go. Um, so usually in bronzy or raw data uh, and silver, you use lake houses and gold data regarding the medallion structure, you will go with warehouses. Um, when you want to access data directly in one leg, then you can use, of course, Power BI with direct leg mode, which is a special topic. Um, you have different functions in Delta table performance that you can uh, use, for example, optimize versus vacuum. Um, so let's have a look into community questions regarding one leg. First question, what's the difference between ADLS v2 and one leg? 
We talked about both ADSS v2 uh, Azure Delta Lake um, version 2 was the basis for Synapse. Um, the um, one, one other data product that were in place before Fabric. Um, and you can have still ADLS v2, and there are valid reasons to use it. It's a, technically the basis of one lake, but one lake abstracts ADLS v2 for you. So when you want to use ADLS v2, you can do it on the left side for getting your data into one lake. Um, when you use ADLS v2, you need to provide the Azure resource and do all the management. When should you do sh use shortcuts versus copying your data? Um, you have the shortcuts and you can copy your data directly when to use what. Uh, when the source is reliable, the source is very fast and the source has a data structure that fits more or less your needs, then shortcutting is a great way to go. When you need to do heavily transformations on your data, when your data source is not really reliable or is not really fast, then um, you should copy the data into one lake because then you have a high performance um, location for your data. Um, there's sometimes a question, Can when I already have Delta tables, can they be recognized as tables in Lakehouse? Yes, they can but you have to put them into the tables folder and not into the files folder. How does security work with shortcuts? That's an interesting question. It's because you have security on the source, of course, and you have a shortcut, and how does it work? So when you have internal one-leg shortcuts, it's passed through single sign-on. The permissions you have on the target are the permissions that you get. When you have ADN SV2 or S3 shortcuts to external cloud systems, uh, then the shortcut creator defines the credentials. So that's a card delegated. Um, and you usually will go with some um, service principle for automated workloads, of course, because then you will use a script. Um, there are some limitations. Uh, so for example, when you have too many shortcuts in one path, there is a, uh, you shouldn't go beyond 15 shortcuts. Microsoft recommends uh, only use 10 shortcuts after that the performance will degrade. Um, when you define shortcuts with spaces, Delta will not be able to recognize that. You so should avoid spaces, but I think when you are a long time in IT, you know that, that you will not use names with spaces. Right? Um, tips from the community. The One Lake File Explorer is a great way and a great tool. You should try it out and you should use it, especially for business users to upload files in a very easy way. Um, for Power BI performance, you should heavily consider direct lake mode, which we will cover in a separate video. Um, and uh, in general, you should put one lake as the center of everything, and you should uh, do a proper design of one lake uh, just from the very beginning. Otherwise, you will end up with a variety of special uh, workspaces that are weird names and so on. You all know that there's always the same lighting. Thank you very much for attending. Enjoy your work with Fabric.